Yeah. All right, let's talk about World War Two. No. World War eighty four. <laughs> apparently. WW two. Right. World War eighty four. World War eighty four. What happened to all the others? I missed those. Mm. <laughs> the world just kept starting over. It was like a Groundhog's Day sort of thing. Oh, so this is our eighty fourth World War. Uh, hi. Hello there. We didn't see you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> hi. Hello there. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to paint a picture. <laughs> we're going to paint a Are you Bob Ross? <laughs> there are no mistakes here. This will all be in the final edit of the show. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just wait till I convert these over to podcasts. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, this, is, this is previews and reviews. We're your hosts, Hayden Smalley. And I'm Stacia Gessert. And today we're going to be, if you can't tell, reviewing Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what are your thoughts on this? We just watched it. Um, Literally, like, two days ago. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. I thought it was so fun. I actually think I liked it better than the first one. Same. Really? Same. I okay. did. It just... And the, the villains, though campy, felt more realistic, felt yes. more natural. Yes. Uh, Maxwell Lord felt kind of cheesy and kind of, to me, felt like he was supposed to be a political cartoon of Trump. I mean, you see uh, that hair. Really? Oh, I didn't know that And the being all. the businessman and the... Oh. It I just, it was know. like, it was kind of subtle other than his toupee of hair. <laughs> I mean... But, um, I mean, they didn't, because, uh, I mean, like, they did, the thing is, they didn't make him out to be this complete bad guy either mm. it's he's honestly just a broken man trying to fix his issues and ultimately what brought him back to reality and brought him back to you know his his heart and everything was his son and wanting mm. to be there for his son and um you know i thought that was honestly really cool for a villain to go mm -hmm. um and then the cheetah character which <laughs> is girl. only the cheetah for like a minute yes but that had such a cool it had like, such a cool lead up though yeah and i loved the leopard print sprinkled throughout the movie yeah it was kind of which they it. could do because it was the 80s so i feel like that's the mm -hmm. only reason an origin story for the cheetah worked yes <laughs> it was because you're already used to seeing leopard print in this movie at this point like mm -hmm. it makes sense that's true. um but i loved her character honestly i felt so bad for her me too like like the whole movie and her her origin story is basically electro from the amazing spider-man 2 yes yes but i thought executed better stacia disagrees with me on this one i love electro from amazing spider-man 2 that's the only reason forgive me that's the only reason why i even look in the general direction of that spider-man i'm not why are a you huge looking fan here? Why are i'm you... not i'm not a huge well because i if i stare into their souls they will be terrified yeah, I keep looking at this camera. i'm giving them i'm giving them a break oh boy um but no like i i'm not a huge fan of the andrew andrew, andrew garfield? garfield yeah andrew garfield uh spider-man um but I love Electro. I he he made me cry. Like honestly, like th that's literally the first movie I've ever cried at. Are you serious? Was, I'm dead serious. Did you cry when spoilers Gwen Stacy dies? I no no I didn't care about that. <laughs> spoilers. Best part of the movie. By spoilers. The way. But I cried. Actually, I think twice. I cried the first time when Electro was he like he, before he was electro when jamie fox's character came home on his birthday after being bullied at work and he opened up this it's closet like, and it's full of all these spider-man things and he's just like oh happy birthday and he's pretending to be spider-man and he's telling himself happy birthday and he's having this conversation with spider-man it's like the saddest thing ever. And then the second time when he finally gets to meet his hero, Spider-Man, but he's kind of freaking out and turning into like a villain, you know? And Spider-Man's just like, bro, calm down. And he like gets so upset because he's like, that's my hero. Like, why are you being yeah. mean to me? I cried. But anyways, this is about Wonder Woman <laughs> 84. Because well, like I, I felt, and, and you know, I'll, maybe we'll do a versus review yes. on these two. Yes. <laughs> um, but like with Electro, I just felt like, 
you know, it, it was clear that the, that the character was not mentally there all the way, which I thought was kind of sad for them to make him, you know, turn out to be this almost, like, overly motivated villain. I don't know. I feel like she was more insecure. No, than I'm it talking was, about Electro. Oh, oh, we're talking about Electro. Yeah, Sorry. like, like he, like he just all of a sudden, <laughs> about Electro. like he just all of a sudden became right. motivated to be you're a right. villain. Yeah, well, and, because he kept getting his heart broken. Well, yeah, it just. But back, I mean, back to, to back to Barbara, whatever right. her name was. Barbara um, Leopard. Barbara Leopard. There we go. Uh, the cheetah. She like she was honestly like genuinely a good person like she, she was. her most valued thing was her humanity mm -hmm. and that's what was stripped of her in the end because yeah. the spoilers the she gets that way because of this crystal that was cursed by like the god lies or whatever mm -hmm. to you know grant you wishes but it took the thing that you valued most yeah and it stripped her of her humanity and which says something about wonder woman because it stripped her Wonder Woman of her power. Yeah. And that showed that that's what she valued most. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of see her have to come to terms with that. But back to the leopard, I mean, I just, you progressively, she didn't just go straight from the neglected nobody who's really nice to mm -hmm. now I'm a bad guy. It was a very, she, you saw her degrade as the movie went. Mm -hmm. And she finally just broke. Yeah. And I, I really liked how they did that. Um, so. It's definitely a story of, like, how comparison can really take you down. I honestly feel like that was, like, the whole moral of the story. Or even, like, coveting what you don't have. Yeah. You know? Like, that was the whole story. And I really liked the the dude villain. I always forget his name. What's his name? Max Lord. Yeah, Max. I really like him because he's, like, this TV personality that you only would find in the 80s. And that's yeah. why it worked so well. Like, because I told you earlier, I was like, I don't understand why this movie takes place in the 80s. <laughs> like, it could it could take place at any other time, but maybe it's still I mean, it, it could be. It could have take, taken place in the 90s almost. It, it could have been I mean, present day. I kind of want a 90s uh, Wonder Woman movie. Oh, okay. Honestly, I think that, I mean, I get it, it's only like a few years later, but. Well, Wonder Woman 98. That's the year I was born. Nice. Probably shouldn't have said that on camera. Bleep that out. <laughs> They're going to steal your identity now. I really hope they don't. I've given them my last name, man. The year I was born. <laughs> but they don't know where you were born. This is true. Ha. They don't have your social security. Would you like to give it? No, no, no. <laughs> Her social I'll be scrolling. Is... <laughs> I'll be scrolling below us. Um, but no, this film is such a fun time with friends. We went and saw it with my fiance, Haley, and our good friend, Caleb. Yes. Our original quartet of moviegoers. We call yeah. ourselves the Quick Trip Rush. No product placement. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to bleep that out. Because, <laughs> like, there's, there's a story behind this. There was this one time where we, we had went to go see it was Spider-Verse. Yes, it was, wasn't it? And we were running short on time, and Caleb was driving. Mm -hmm. And crazy driving, my dad. <laughs> and, love you, Caleb. And we <laughs> decided to go to a quick trip to get snacks. To sneak into the <laughs> to theater. To sneak into the theater. Sorry, theater. And, um, <laughs> like, we all, like, because we were in such a hurry, we rushed in. And, like, the workers were looking around, like, are we getting mobbed? <laughs> like, are we getting robbed? And we, we, like, come to our, like, we grab our snacks and come to the counter to pay for it. And they just, they almost seemed, like, disappointed. Like, yeah. they're like, this was exciting. And, oh. <laughs> That's funny. But, so, uh, so, I mean, we, uh, us four went and saw a movie again for yep. the first time in, like, forever. Yes. And it was such a fun time. I really enjoyed how they, how the writers gave her an invisible jet. Yeah. Like, yes! Because she has one in the comics. So, like, how yes! are they going to pull that off? And it was perfect! It was, it was great. Yeah. And they had a good excuse for it. And now mm -hmm. she's got to find a new pilot or learn to drive on her own. Yeah, spoilers. He died again. <laughs> well, he just went back to being dead. He just... <laughs> which, is, which is different than dying. He just went back to being dead. That's and different. He, which I thought was weird that they had him, like, take over some other dude's body. Well, that was like, the only, like, way to be somewhat realistic. Otherwise, you know, there were, like, historical photos of him. And people would be like, wait a second, it's the same guy. Although, yeah, you're right. I feel like... There was just... historical photos of her. I know. As I was saying it, I was like, what the heck? Yeah, it was weird that they just put him in someone else's body. I don't know why And, and now that. she's been with two men, technically. Uh, but the soul, <laughs> man. Oh, my <laughs> The 
soul. That guy's going to be insane. like, that guy, like, hears from her or whatever, like, what actually happened. He's like, I was saving that for Mary. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, that's just so bad for him. <laughs> Aiden. <laughs> like, that would be awful. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, that'd be awful. I don't know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't actually see them get down and dirty. but no, Like, no. it's insinuated. <laughs> the way you said it, get down and dirty. <laughs> How would they say it in the 80s? Make love. <laughs> Make Anywho. love, not war, man. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> but uh, again, like the original Wonder Woman movie that came, well, the one that came out before this, uh, the costume and prop design were key to making this, to really selling this film as an 80s movie, and yeah. it did a really good job. Yeah. Thinking back on the movie, this was a comparison to Spider-Man I hadn't realized watching it, is this movie shows her just living, trying to live an average daily life, mm -hmm. and then superheroing getting in the middle of it. Yes, I, I, I thought of that too, actually. Especially with her love life. Mm -hmm. Like, she had to ultimately renounce her wish, spoilers, and give up seeing Chris Pine's character again. Yeah. And, like, I mean, she's crying as she's running away from him. As of course. She knows that he's went back to being dead. Yeah. Because I, I can't feel like he died. I, I can't feel like I say he died again. He died again. <laughs> <laughs> but I see what but, you mean. Because, I mean, but yeah, like, learning very similar lessons and living in a almost similar way to Spider-Man, especially with her, like, whip swinging everywhere all mm -hmm. of a sudden. And, like, how Spider-Man... Yes. It was very Spider-Man-esque. It was very Spider-Man-esque, except her whip swinging is magical because the rope will find something to attach. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just attaches to the air. Like, like, <laughs> like literally, like, they show you it just attached to the air. Like, like it'll, like, be whipping at the end to pull her up. Yes. And, and they kind of use that to give her a way to, like, fall with style. Yes. <laughs> by the end of the film. Which, I mean, it's kind of cool, not going to lie. Yeah. I would really enjoy doing that myself. Although, didn't but... she, like, legitimately start flying, though, at some point in this movie? No. no. She was always what? falling with style. Are you sure? She was using her arms to, like, change the way her body fell to what? make it seem like she's flying. Yeah, but no, she couldn't. Wonder Woman can't actually fly. I swear she was flying. <laughs> they really, they really made it look like she was flying, but yes. no, Wonder Woman can't fly. Hmm. She's using her whip for falling with style. Fair enough. She fell with style up in the clouds near the plains. <laughs> yep, that's uh, that's that's what happened. <laughs> um, but no, I mean this was such a fun movie and. Um, it was really cool seeing her grab onto lightning bolts with her whip. I thought mm -hmm. that was cool. Um, and we were talking about this, I think, before we rolled the camera. The posters made this movie look way trippier than it was going to be. It's true. I mean, they sold that it was going to be in the 80s. Yeah. But, oh, something else. Her gold armor is, like, set up earlier in the film as, like, this epic, like, you know, and, like, if it you know, defended so-and-so who apparently died, who we find at the end of the film didn't actually die. Yeah, that's a major spoiler, but yeah. Yeah, that's a major spoiler, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, and it wasn't, like, destroyed at all. So then when Wonder Woman goes up against the cheetah and the cheetah's just clawing at it and ripping the metal feathers apart. I was so confused I'm by like, that. I'm like, that is so dumb. They set this up as, like, an epic armor. And honestly, yeah. this is... This is crappy armor. Yeah, they said it like, could withstand all of mankind, but... But it, it couldn't, couldn't withstand woman. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. There you woman go. power! So it didn't stand a chance against Captain Marvel Carol Danvers. Ugh, don't even remind me of her. I do so, not like So we've her. got an 80s woman empowerment movie. We've got a 90s woman uh, empowerment movie. Oh, that's true. That did take place yeah, in the 90s, didn't Yeah, it? Captain Marvel took place in the See, 90s. See, that's why they did it in the 80s, because they were like, Captain They didn't Captain want to Marvel be copycat, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, her, her, armor, her, armor, her armor was so underutilized, and yeah. I'm just... I was very disappointed. And, like, she uses the reveal, like, sh like shedding off her wings or whatever mm -hmm. and just standing there in the armor to reveal to the villain wow 
you renounced your wish. I'm like, she could have put on that armor anyway. I know. Like, what does it matter? <laughs> like, that armor was really as strong as the film had set it up to be. Yes. She didn't even need her powers. Yes, for like, it's true. <laughs> it's true. She, like, totally tore it up, and they said it was, like, impenetrable. Yeah. So, but how would you rate this as a, as a movie? As a movie? Four and a half. Okay. I'd give it a four and a half because it was a fun movie to watch. I had a good time. Like, I was like, this is cute. And I really loved how the villains were developed. I always have a thing about the villains. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I would say that. That's, that's yeah. what I would say. I got to go with a four. Um, I'm only going a little bit lower than Seisha is because there were certain areas where I felt like something else should be happening when it wasn't. Like, there were moments where I'm like, this feels about the right timing for action sequence to happen. Hmm. And it kind of left for wanting and kind of, and by the time the action sequence happened, I was like, there we go. There's our action sequence. And I just felt kind of like, well, it missed its timing, which, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I can be kind of funny about that. And so, some movies, it doesn't matter. This one, for some reason, it took a little bit of notice for me. Oh, really? But in general, I, I loved this movie. I thought it was a great time. Um, as a film, I've only got to give it two and a half. Um, That's fair. It just, it felt campy at parts. Um, it felt kind of ridiculous, like the 80s. So, I mean, I guess... That... I mean, it worked perfectly for the theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but, I mean, there's just certain aspects of it that felt really campy. Some of the acting wasn't as good as in the first Wonder Woman. Hmm. Like, Max Lord, like... He, like his off his off TV personality was still very campy. But he's but, an eighties TV personality. Right. That's all he knew how to do. Yeah. He, yep. Like he didn't know how to run a business. He didn't know how to be a father. He didn't know how to he be makes a person. Perfect villain. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, so I, I give it a two and a half as a film. But it's such a fun movie. Like it's so yeah. worth watching, especially with a big bucket of popcorn. Mm. I agree. I forgot to eat our popcorn, but yeah. I actually regretted it that night. That night, I was like, I should have eaten the popcorn. Should have brought it with us. I don't know what I did, but mm, I, I regretted that. Yeah, like, she wanted popcorn. Didn't take, like, hardly a bite. I didn't take a bite. I didn't take any of it. I had a Kit Kat. Oh I had a Kit Kat, and I had some cheeses. See, because, like, I felt bad, kind of, because, like, me and Haley kept eating popcorn when we didn't think we it. were going to have any. I know. Well, Caleb and I got slushies Honestly, as well. Honestly, got, so got, we like... Like, got to be honest, though, that first, the, like, the top layer of movie theater popcorn is the best because it's that's true. the freshest butter. It's true. And by the time you get down to the bottom, it just doesn't taste as it's good. It's just light butter. Although I'm not really supposed to eat butter, but you're right. I, I feel you. I understand exactly what you're talking about. Maturity-wise, where would you put it? I would say, well, again, I mean, how I was raised, I would have watched this movie in elementary school. Yeah. But I could see how you might want to have maybe a middle schooler watch it. Because there was that sex scene, and I say it like this, because they didn't show anything, but it was very clear that they were naked in bed together yeah. during the aftermath. And so I know some families that would be kind of uncomfortable with their kids yeah. seeing that, even if it was very quick as it was. So maybe middle school? Yeah, I, I got to say middle school, mostly for that. And then, you know, I mean, like the first one, woman, it's got elements of war and... Um, you know, death and destruction, and it's got some things weight-wise that I don't think elementary kids are going to quite get, like her having to give up her wish to have her boyfriend back. Mm -hmm. um, most elementary kids aren't going to get that. Yeah. As, as well as at least a junior high kid. Um, having to give up somebody you really care about so that you can do what you have to do. Um which, honestly, I mean, is a lesson a lot of people could learn. I mean, you might I mean, not have biblical. to... I mean, right. I mean, you might not have to give up someone so that you can get your superpowers back. But you might have to let somebody go so that you can do what you're called to, what you need to, what you can't do with them in your life. That's real. I just went through that. So did I this previously in the year yes we both had to go through that this yeah. past year when i say previously we? in the year i mean 2020 i know this video is getting posted 2021 oh, yeah. but yeah so yes in 2020 we had to give up 
people like Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So And so did God. God had to give up his son. Yeah. I for mean us even, and our even had to even had to turn away, you mm-hmm. know, when Jesus Christ died on the cross and um just because it it hurt him so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, kind of reminds me of how like Wonder Woman had to like just run and leave yeah. and renounce her wish to have her boyfriend back because other I, I mean, if she's standing there, you know, renouncing her wish, she's not going to be able to do Keep it going. really because yeah. it just hurts so much. And, you know, not that I think, you know, God couldn't have still done it and watched the sign. It's just that pain is just so real. Yeah. Um so you know, if, if you've ever doubted God's love for you, just know that he gave up his most valuable anything mm-hmm. for you and would do it all again um, just for you. Yeah. So, anyways, um, wow, I got, like, really deep and stuff. I, I hope know, that is true to you guys. <laughs> it did. <laughs> um, but so anyways, if you guys love the, or if you guys like these videos, be sure to let us know and please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. We really appreciate your support, your, your support, your, your, your support. support. Um, leave us comments. Let us know what you thought of the new Wonder Woman movie. Let us know what movies you want to see us review. Um, and be sure to check out our Redbubble store. We really appreciate you guys supporting us through the store. Um, we've started to make a little bit of money from the store now, so... The more support we get, the more movies we can afford to go watch and yes. make reviews for so that, say, you're a parent wondering if you should take your kid to go see said movie, maybe we've done a review over it. And you can check with us to see, like, what kind of worldview it might have been made under and if it's, you know, appropriate for your family. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, I'm Hayden. I'm Stasia. And this has been Previews and Reviews. God bless. That was sloppy.